Hi, guys, and welcome back to another all-new episode of Collider Best of the Week. I am Perry Nemiroff, your host for... Wait a minute. No, I'm Mark Riley. Perry Nemiroff is on vacation, uh, sorry, assignment, in London right now covering Star Wars Celebration, and we're going to get to some of that uh, right in a minute, but... Thank you, everyone, for tuning in right now. Perry will be back. But just as a reminder, guys, next week, no best of the week, we will be on assignment in Comic-Con. So check out all our footage there that we'll be releasing throughout the weekend. And you'll catch it all on Collider Video's YouTube channel. But now let's get to the week that was the best of the week. This is for all you guys that don't have enough time to maybe catch movie, uh, movie talk or Collider Nightmares, Heroes. This is the show for you. We gather all the information for you. We put it in a nice little package. And you can sit there and enjoy it with your morning coffee on this fine Saturday. So, everyone, let's go to the main topic. The big news that hit during movie talk yesterday... Star Wars Celebration Europe is happening, and Rogue One footage was debuted with a sizzle reel. The panel's going to look at that and whether or not they were a little upset with, that uh, a trailer wasn't dropped. But we do have some new footage, a sizzle reel behind the scenes. Let's see what the Movie Talk panel thought of that. Well, this wasn't the trailer that we were <laughs> yeah. expecting. We talked about how the trailer was going to come out, and we're going to do... All this stuff about the trailer, instead this featurette came out. We got three minutes of like, uh, of great behind the scenes stuff. Great, we saw the practical effects versus CGI effects. We got to hear from the actors, from the director. We got to hear, we got to see what it looked like. And we got that vibe again of the war. We got that vibe that it's gonna be a darker, grittier Star Wars. And that music really helped to elevate it and put you right in the world. And so whatever the stuff people were complaining about, the reshoots or rewritings or whatever, to me, I was back in the camp again, a thousand percent. Once I know that I'm gonna to see a film, I steer clear of the trailers as much as possible. So this I'll make an exception for because I do want to see as many of these as I can, as much as I want to deny myself because I want to hold the anticipation. But it's kind of hard not to. And I'm basically just looks like you know seven samurai in space. There was one quote in there, and I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Where uh, Gareth Edwards said, "You you know, even though he, Star Wars is his favorite movie, he's like you don't want to be too respectful. Mm -hmm. And what are you bringing new to the table?" Do you think that's a little, you know, a uh, response to the criticisms of Force Awakens where, mm. you know, everyone's like, oh, it's too much of a retread of A New Hope. Right. Is that something that maybe subconsciously that they're trying to do? Like, hey, guys, this is something totally new. That's certainly a valid point. It's, uh, it's certainly possible. I don't know, though, if Gareth wanted to subtweet and mm -hmm. side-eye these people or throw some shade uh, at it because I think he wants to very much have his own version of, like, his own film. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's trying to separate it and he's trying to make it very clear that this is not... Uh, a retread of the old tr of the original trilogy. This is not Force Awakens. This is something else completely. And I think by saying that, he's saying he's a fan of expanding the universe and wanting different voices to be involved in Star Wars and interpret Star Wars. Now it's on to Collider Heroes. John Schnepp and the panel were discussing the huge set visit that Collider.com did for Suicide Squad and how the big story, how Batman fits into the Suicide Squad story, and that it's actually told from the point of view of the villains looking at Batman coming after them. Very interesting stuff. Let's hear what the panel had to say about that. The this. two things that really excite me about this, Ayer's approach to Batman, because he described what I think a lot of Batman fans want to see. When we see Batman in movies, what we do is we see Bruce Wayne first, and we see him thinking things through, going to the cave, getting on the computers, putting on the costume, getting in the car. So when he shows up and does this thing, we have that context. But Ayer says, think of it from the villain's perspective. He just shows up like a demon in the night, mm -hmm. breaks everybody's backs and their legs and their <laughs> ribs and puts them in the hospitals. He is a living nightmare right. to the villains. He goes, this is gonna be the first time we see Batman from the villain's perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exciting. Just thinking about like a couple of the added scenes from the Ultimate Edition where from the just the TV monitor and Batman <laughs> drops yep. up. It's yep. that kind of stuff that's like, that's how you see how real people perceive this you know weird creature. They don't know him as Bruce Wayne. I love that the, they let loose the the information that in Deadshot's cell, he's got like, you know, kill the bat, like all these like things because obviously Batman put, put him, him there. there. So I love those little elements. So. I'm just awesome. excited. I mean, <laughs> I, I think as far as the, the DC universe, they talk about, well, Man of Steel really was the movie that launched the right. DC universe. Now we've got Batman v Superman. Right. But this is such to me a, a left turn and I want to see how it all 
works. I'm excited to see it, in a different way. I mean, I was very excited to see Civil War, and it was very satisfying. Right. But this film, I really don't have a sense of it, and I'm I'm. It's it's almost going to be as much as we've seen. It's almost going to be like for the first time unwrapping a Christmas present that you actually don't know what you're getting. I am in full it's agreement. It is really the mo most exciting property of all of the DC properties. All right, now it's on to Jedi Council, and of course it's Star Wars week with Star Wars Celebrations Europe's happening. Uh, the council is going right into the talk of Rogue One and whether or not they're going to address the rumors of the reshoots at the actual panel during Star Wars Celebration. So let's see what the council led by Christian Harloff thinks about that. Let's get into the things that we're kind of most excited sure. about, and I think the the obvious is that we're going to kick off the same way we did last year, and that's with the big trailer. Everyone's talking about Rogue One. We know that the Rogue One three minute trailer has been rumored to come out. As it's pretty much a guarantee that we're going to yeah. get the Rogue One trailer. That will happen. The conversation as far you know, I wonder if they're going to address the rumors of the reshoot, reshoots inside of this thing. They may or may not. There's been a lot of stuff. They'll probably maybe give a good. I, I think that they might, but we'll, but I'll tell you, it, it's going to be kind of like a a way that squashes rumors. And mm -hmm. I think that they won't necessarily say, well, guys, let me tell you about these reshoots. They're not going to say that. It depends on who intros the trailer, because I feel like someone easily could be like, you guys want to check out some of the stuff we shot in reshoots? And then it's no, like, no, no, trailer. No, that's, not what I, that's not what I mean, I feel though. like that's the most that they're going to do, because otherwise it's like, what's the point? They're going to be yeah. like, so everyone was talking about us doing these reshoots. No, 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 really, no but that's, that's what I mean, though. What I don't do I, mean? I don't think they're going to do it like that. I think they're, I think I'm, if they do anything, I'm it'll be tone. like in a joking way. Mm -hmm. like, no, I think I'm, I mean addressing like as far as tone oh. goes. I mean, they're going to they're, they're gonna, either going to definitively say this is a war film or we're going lighter in tone, not, not straightforward over the head saying mm -hmm. to address those reshoots. I mean, like they're going to say things throughout it through whether it's Gareth Edwards or Kathleen Kennedy, whoever it might be is going to address the concerns that people had in the rumors. I think it'll be during a q and I think yeah. that's when they'll, 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 they'll address it and, and touch on it. And, and I hope the Q&A isn't full of people asking the same question over right. and over again. You know sometimes at mm -hmm. these conventions or celebrations that that can happen because they all want to have their question reworded in a certain way. So hopefully, I think that's where they'll present it. I agree with you, Tiffany. I don't think it'll be, if they do it, it'll be like playful undercut because yeah. you don't want to give it a lot of credibility. Yeah. You don't want to give it a lot of steam right. because then you give it validity. You know, it's like responding back to someone on Twitter who's totally constantly coming after you. You're giving that person's comments validity by yeah. commenting back. And so you don't want to do that all but the time. But it's hard though, because it's, right, it's like a right. fart in you're a right. car at this yeah, point. Yeah, you're right. it's like, yeah, but it's like, but I think but they can still address it in Q&A. As long as yeah. they have good footage, like no one's going to mm. care. All right, and now we're on to Collider Nightmares. Of course, I'm on there. So we had a great panel where the big news coming out was Javier Bardem cast as Frankenstein's monster. So of course, being Collider Nightmares, a little bit of horror themed episode. We finally got to talk about this huge casting, which is leading towards the shared universe of monster movies over at Universal. So we're gonna kick it over to Clark talking about Javier Bardem as Frankenstein and what we all thought on the panel. What do you think about starting or seeing the creature in a different film first? Does that mean that we're gonna abandon the origin story or what What are your thoughts on that? I don't know, that's the part of the story that kind of really confused me and almost made it impossible to predict what mm -hmm. they're gonna do. I don't, I mean, this is just speculation. We can't really predict what they're gonna do, especially not until we see the first movie in this whole universe, but I'm going to guess that we're going to get a better sense of what they're going to do with this character when we find out who is playing Frankenstein. Mm. Because if Frankenstein is a big name who could fit amongst this lineup that they've made, which is absolutely incredible, like good job making us forget Dracula and Toll because you've got a killer lineup right now. If that's a big name, I feel like that would give us the better shot of getting the origin story. I was kind of thinking about like the way Penny Dreadful sort of did it. You know, when you, in the pilot episode, when you meet Dr. Frankenstein, you don't even see the creature. He makes an appearance very shortly after, but the creature is the creature. And I, it kind of assumes that you know the it's alive mythology, right? Remember, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is incredibly intelligent. He's not a lumbering monster. That He's only like that when he's first born. Then he becomes like an actual human being. So I think that's how they're going to introduce Bardem. Do you think that when we see Javier Bardem, he will be in some version of that classic Frankenstein's monster look? Or do you think they're going to start from scratch? I'm hoping for something different. I'm hoping for like a kind of a reimagination. We just got the set picks from uh, Sofia Botella's yeah. The mm. Mummy. She looks interesting. I like what they're, what they're doing. It, it, I mean, how, how much can you stray from a mummy look? So it looks like it's holding to what we are familiar with. I'm, I'm hoping the same thing happens with Frankenstein. I'm just very interested. I, all I'll say about this casting, it's it's so fantastic. Yeah. And, it's, and I kind of echo what, what Christian Harloff said this morning on Movie Talk. 
this has got me, this casting in particular has got me the most excited. Now it's over to the top 10 show, the newest addition to the Collider Videos uh, YouTube channel. We got Matt Nost and John Roca talking about the top 10 most unnecessary remakes in celebration of Ghostbusters, which came out just yesterday. So let's see what the guys are talking about with their top 10 list on the most unnecessary remakes. My number seven is the mid-90s Broderick Godzilla. That is my number. <laughs> so you're, you're saying they, that it wasn't necessary to remake that film when I, they remade it. That's the, that's the title here. At that time, remakes. I didn't go into the movie thinking that way. Okay. Maybe that's one of the, the movies that helped me graduate to the... The idea of that, oh, after having seen it, just really like well that's done. what we went back to do. Okay, it's amazing how they make this huge dinosaur, like just an incredible creature, because of you know the the largesse of humanity yes. of nuking underneath the water. This is the atomic age, and this is a, you know throwback monster from back in the day, <laughs> and it is boring. You watch the it movie, really you don't care. By the end of it, you're just like, I don't care. Yeah. It's so impressive to do. Like, Mike, I kind of, you know, once again, another tip of the cap. We should have a graphic for that. It's the third time I think I've said it this uh, show. It's just a little tip of the cap and something cheesy and a little twing, like sparkle the teeth. You know I what's know. great is making more work for our production team. That, that's yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's a hypothetical to me. I think we'll get that when we get confetti, is this which I don't one? think that's either is happening anytime soon. Is that so, what the creature looked like? I totally forgot. It's wow. just doesn't doesn't even look like really Not, Godzilla. It doesn't even look like Godzilla at all. It looks like some runaway lizard with scales with like uh, spikes coming out of its back. Yeah, and the yeah. whole storyline with Matthew Broderick and what Hank Azaria is a, a cameraman yeah. and then the girl is the reporter that I, did she have a fling or something with Broderick before this? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. It just that's how little I've seen it, I don't know, like three, four times. Just wow. It, it's been on repeat. Over the years. Look, the producers have been trying to get their the money off. back on this for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I remember, uh, like, tie-ins with uh, uh, candy manufacturers oh, right. yeah, on the that. packages. All that. This is the first time I ever saw it. I was like, wow, they've got branding everywhere. Right, right. Uh, and then it just failed so spectacularly. Yeah, and Roderick was so boring in it. it the whole thing work. was boring. Yeah, the whole thing's boring. The whole thing. Right. That's, I don't even know how you do it. Okay, and now we're on to the interviews portion of Best of the Week. We have Steve Frosty Weintraub, editor-in-chief of Collider.com. He got to interview a lot of the main players over for Ghostbusters, so we're going to check out his interviews with Melissa McCarthy and director Paul Feig. So let's check that out right now. I was watching the B-roll in the other room. Oh, and, Lord. And I haven't I, seen that. And I have to tell you, it really looks like this was a tough shoot where no one was laughing. Was very, very hostile. Paul's a monster. He really Let's is. Weaken. And he also really is underdressed all the time. He's sloppy. Yeah, everybody, oh, the suits, the suits. It's not true. He shows up in frayed jean cutoffs. Uh, uh, what are the, those waterproof sandals. Um, and he's just a monster on set. No, it's every day. It's every day in a, like a beautiful bespoke yeah. suit. It's dreamy. I mean, literally I get there and I'm like, ooh, ooh, that's a different vet. Like I, I literally take pictures of Paul, he's like my weird dolly. I take pictures of his suits every day and I just keep records of them because I'm a huge dork. Now that I said that out loud, I'm like, hmm, probably shouldn't have said that. How has this been in comparison to what you thought you were gonna do? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's been, and I'll say it, a loud vocal minority of a-holes mm -hmm. that have been, you, you know, and I yeah. can say these things. Uh, <laughs> That's right. But it's like, I'm just curious what it's been like for you um, taking on something like this. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you kind of walk in with your eyes open, but I don't know if my eyes were completely wide open because I just thought, oh, people will be just kind of happy to have another Ghostbusters or whatever form it is. Um, so the level of vitriol that, that came at us was a little surprising, but I get it too. You know, look, it's something, it's a property that people are very passionate about. It's a big part of their childhood. It's a big part of their past. And I really respect that. When you know, when it's it's the small minority that have problem with the women, then that that's kind of a non-starter for me. But I can't even register that. But you know, but people had their legitimate fears about it, and, and I try to be respectful of that. And it's it's. I feel like the media has made it sound like I accuse everybody who doesn't like it of being a misogynist. I've never said that. Uh, I, I'll do that instead. Okay, I'll, I'll thank, say those words. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. That's right. But it's been you know, it, it's it, all you can do really is you can. Hear the noise, and then you just kind of put your head down and go, we just know what we want to do, and let's just try to do the best job we can. All right, it wouldn't be best of the week without those crazy kids over at Collider TV Talk. The topic du jour is that Walking Dead has added four new series regulars to the lineup, so let's see what the panel had to say about that. I'm not excited for the season. That finale really, really put, you know, I don't know, it left a sore spot. I just, yeah, the I only just, thing I'm looking forward to is more Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's good, but it's like... 
it is this show unlike game of thrones drags it out so mm -hmm. much i mean 16 episodes is too much it should go back to 10 to 12 it just keeps going there's no end in sight amc has come out and said they, they have no end in sight for the show they would like it to go on forever that's not good show running i don't want to hear that no. that's horrible this is the story that needed the audible groan because yeah. if game of thrones comes out a little bit later okay at least we know we're getting something great as soon as i saw this i was like oh my god just bloat the story more so that there's more storylines to like piddle out no. little bits of i i feel so burned by the finale i i was actually thinking about this the other day i'm like unless these freaks make me watch it i might just be like me i don't want to anymore game of thrones like serves me so well even when i feel like they're not setting something up they are the walking dead just like keeps like dropping these little like nuggets of poop and making me eat them in the hopes that eventually i'll get something as good as first season and it's never gonna happen and 20 people is too frippin much as look the at the soap. people who scored the job if you're familiar with the comics to me this just hints at what direction they're gonna go in this yeah. season and mm. having a very vague sense of what the comic what the comics have coming I think I'm okay with it. I mean, all four of these are fantastic actors, so I understand complaints, especially about the season finale, but I mean, maybe I'm just part of the problem, but when they do things like that, even though I might be frustrated, I'm still like, give me more, give me more. Mm -hmm. And based on these characters and where I think they're going, I'm okay with it. All right, now is the portion where we look at Collider.com. We have those awesome writers working every day, giving you a lot of editorials and all the breaking news, of course, that we use on Movie Talk. So first up, we have Adam Chitwood. He was able to do a set visit, a very ambitious set visit with Suicide Squad in his article, Suicide Squad, over 55 things to know about the ambitious DC film. Check that out right now. You can go to Collider.com and get that action right there. Up next, the Collider.com, the whole staff did their 25 best sci-fi movies of the 2000s. This was a joint effort by the entire .com team. We have Sunshine, we have War of the Worlds. It's a great in-depth article of all your favorite sci-fi movies. Check that out over at Collider.com. All right, next up is the eight biggest TV flops of the last decade by Aubrey Page. She's here looking at all the major shows that came out in the 2000s. And of course, you got to start it off with Joey, the spinoff with Friends from 2004 to 2006. Can't even believe it lasted that long. And lastly, we have the Collider staff is looking at, in celebration, of course, of the Ghostbusters movie coming out. We have the Ghostbusters animated series. So they go into the 10 craziest episodes from those animated series, which, of course, I know all of these because I grew up watching this awesome show. So again, guys, go on over to Collider.com. Check out all these great articles by the Collider.com staff. Read on up. It's like a lot of good stuff. All right, guys, that leads us to the movie trivia schmodown. We had a barn burner this past week. Elliot Dewberry from Machinima ETC took on our very own Matt Nost from the Top 10 show. These guys duked it out in a battle of knowledge of movie trivia. Let's check out some of that action. I've returned once again after shedding the dead weight, and I'm here to win. Embarrass? I am going to trump him. Granted, I've never met him, and I don't know anything about him. But I am going to destroy him. I can't tell you shit about Matt Nose because uh, as far as I know, he doesn't exist. And according to his Twitter, he's been dead for four years. Oh, rumor has it that I've been dead for four years, eh? Well, you're going by that based on Twitter, huh? And then you look at his, it's Elliot XTC, which makes him sound like an early aughts wrestler. And then you meet him, and he looks like the gaffer behind the behind the behind the wrestler. Elliot Quitshot do. Quick shot. Oh, I like that. Giving him a little. Oh, that's a fifteen thousand dollar fine in some league. Matt, the mechanic. No. There is Matt. Oh, look at me dance. He's doing the dance. He is ready. He's dancing around Elliot. That's a showman. That's a showman. Okay. Who directed Michael Douglas and Sean Penn in The Game? David Fincher. Correct. There you go. Hey. In 80s, what is the subtitle for the third Mad Max film? Beyond Thunderdome. Give him two points. He's a Tina Turner fan. Who would have known? All right, and we are back with Meme of the Week. This is a very special Meme of the Week, and it comes from Emilio Gasca. 
one of my personal favorites. I had to pick this one because it features the Collider Nightmares crew. You got me with my guns there and a chainsaw playing Ash. You got Clark, you got Perry, and you got John Schnepp. All of the panel represented for Collider Nightmares. Thank you so much for that, Emilio. It's an awesome one. I love it. And guys, if you want to submit your meme of the week, make sure you send it to mailbag at collider.com or you can do it on Twitter. Just make sure you hashtag Collider Best of the Week. All right, guys, it's the time you've all been waiting for. It's Collider Bloopers. Everybody loves the blue. Cody, what are you doing? Playing Pokemon. Of course you are. Get the hell out of here. Please, let's start over. You know this show's going to be good, you guys. You know this show's going to be good. Today on Collider Movie Talk. Oh, a young woman who wants to have sex and has a little something weird going on down there. Spoiler, her vagina has teeth. <laughs> All right. Let's Thanks just... for not being around. Let's just... Bush, Don't hey. oh. Already. Sorry, Mrs. Draven. <laughs> um, but Dennis, as far as Transformers... I gotta disagree with you completely. Oh my god! I only hate the second movie. Okay, I'm glad you're done. <laughs> uh, I would defer to my uh, expert <laughs> colleagues on here. Uh, this new look at the bunch of a-holes is to be taken at face value. What? This new look at the bunch of a-holes. What the shit? Is this a joke, you guys? This new look at the bunch of a-holes. <laughs> oh! Shit, I'd rather call them like fuck faces than a holes. Thanks for taking my question and tell Sinead to keep up the incredible work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. Oh. I'll tell her when I see her later today. I absolutely enjoy the, the Transformer changes, the Transformers uh, uh, sounds, the characters. Well, you're an idiot. You're just saying that because either you don't want women to hate you or you're a woman. Disgusting white Ooh, yum. Back from the, the, the hero. Rape. That's, that's not enough rape. cream cheese. Rape. Be Superman Dawn of Justice was a whiz, risk with he ha ho ha ha ha. Fuck you. All right, where's my music? Hit it, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would never have sex with that guy, not that he would ever have sex with me. But, like, shouldn't that be the number one criteria for anybody you cast on the CW? So, does Sasha Pro ever want to have sex with them? That's, That's a line line. Line. <laughs> So many of the characters that are in the squad, oh, in that squad, cock. Ever since Keenan Lonsdale, Wally West, fuck. Keelan Lonsdale's Wally's, Keelan Lonsdale's Wally West, fuck. Because I either get inebriated or high before I go see these Transformers movies, and I enjoy the hell out of them when I go see them. I saw Matt Damon hammer driving down the strip. I, I was hammered, so I don't know. It was the best bachelor party ever. Whose yeah. tiger is that in the bathroom? And acting nons for Veep and Julie, Lou, he, her, he. And acting nons for Veep and Julia, Louis Dreyfus, can't say it. <laughs> and acting nods for Veep and Julie. Lu I can't say it. I can't say it. Screw you, Julia. We, we, Listen, the stories what? are terrible. Absolutely. So what exactly are you defending? I enjoy Shiny the metal visual objects? image of it. Yeah. You dangle and, keys and in I, front of your face and save yourself for a dollar. They Pokemon. should be like the villain in a Pokemon movie because they terrorize me every time I show up to this set. Oh, they found something up in the sky. That'll be a clever meme. Here he we go. He looks like a guy who shaves his pubic hair. That's all I'm going to say. Sorry. <laughs> This is great. Christ, oh Sasha. Oh, yay. Even if there is somebody, maybe my age, running around in a park looking for, like, I don't know, it's Ikachu, a Wikafu, or whatever. You find it? Is it, is it on me? Is it on me? Mark, I think we found one. I think it's on me. No, 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 do you do you like do you like the I like the picture. It doesn't matter what you <laughs> think. Oh. <laughs> Dave yeah. Houston, Elena Anaya, Ewan Bremner, and fuck, I can't say that. That's one I wanted it to keep going, and it was oh almost four hours long. You're making, oh, that that movie made my head when, hurt. When they it's started so drawing, bad. you're making my head hurt. Harloff in the house, we're gonna go to party land. Harloff in the hey, so anyway, I'll see you guys at Comic Con. All right, guys, that will do it for Collider Best of the Week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you for having me. I thank you, Perry, for going on vacation so I can take over here. Love it. So, guys, uh, just a reminder, next week there will be no Best of the Week. We will be at Comic-Con, but be sure to subscribe to Collider Video's YouTube channel. Check in at Collider.com. We are going to be doing a lot of content coming right at you from Comic-Con, so be sure. Don't miss that. We're all going to be there having fun. We hope you will, too. So we will see you in two weeks for Collider best of the week. I am Mark Riley. You can find me at Riley around on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you soon.
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.